Hello everyone and welcome to another video and in this video we'll cover neural style transfer. So on the internet you might have seen a lot of artworks created by neural networks. So that method of creating artworks or transferring a style from a picture to another or in real time in videos is known as neural style transfer because we use neural networks or their properties to transfer the style of one image to another. Image that gains the style is called the content image and the image whose style is transferred is called the style image and that these are the basics right so in the last three four years a lot of research papers have come out that have improved over this technology they have made the transitions and gradients a lot more smoother and better and now we also have really fast neural style transfer so which can transfer style in real time in videos so let's get started so this video so this series is divided into two parts in this part, we'll discuss the research paper, we'll understand how this works and the bit of maths behind it. In the next video, we'll implement everything from scratch, styles to different images and see uh, how, our, how our network performs. So let's get started. So what are we trying to achieve here? So I'll show you a few examples, few images that have been generated using neural style transfer. So this is the first image. So I don't have the actual content or the style image, but this is the resultant image. So there was some original image with just buildings and there was this painting of waves and we've combined them to produce this result. It looks stunning. Now the next example is, is a low resolution image. So as you can see, it's a bit pixelated. So on the left, you can see the content image and on the top left, you can see the style image. And we're trying to transfer that style to this content. And on the right is the result, which is quite amazing. And in this example, you can see we have applied different styles on picture of Mona Lisa. So these are the things that can be achieved using this technique. So to better understand the research paper, I have extracted a few excerpts from the research paper. The first point is that the research that this technique uses a class of deep neural networks that are most powerful in image processing tasks. These are called convolutional neural networks. So I assume that you must be knowing about these networks. What are CNNs? Convolutional neural networks consist of layer of small computational units that produce, that process visual information hierarchically in feed forward manner. So uh, if you have studied convolutional neural networks in detail, you understand that networks learn features in hierarchies. So the lower layers will learn about the less important features such as edges or pixel values and stuff but on the the higher layers uh, they learn about the shape and and uh, more more technical features more they care more about the actual content not not just the pixels so that's what it means uh, so yeah each layer can be understood as image filters each of which which extracts a certain feature so for example a car recognizer might have multiple image filters so one filter will look for headlights another filter will look for uh, you know windows and so on uh, that 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 is what is meant by different filters look for different features in the input image and thus the output of a given layer consists of so-called feature maps differently filtered version of input image so same input image is filtered by different filters and produce different feature maps this is this is the whole idea moving on now, how do we extract content from an image? So what we'll do is we'll first extract content and then the style and then we'll try to merge them together. So how to extract content from an image? So how this this is done? So this is another excerpt from the research paper. Along the processing hierarchy of the network, the input image is transformed into representations that increasingly care about the actual content of the image compared to its detailed pixel values. So as I've said already that uh, along the way, as the network gets more deeper it cares more about the actual content of the image and not just the pixel values so this is what is meant by this we therefore refer to the feature responses in a higher layer of the networks as content representation so whenever we want to extract content we look in the higher features so let's just say we will use vgg 19 network for neural style transfer so in that network, we, we always refer to higher convolution layers to extract content of the image, to refer to the content of the image, not the lower layers. So the fourth, the second part of the fourth convolution layer, which is meant by four underscore two, that's what is meant by four underscore two. It says that 
the second part of the fold convolution layer of pre-trained VGG19 network is used as content extractor. We'll look into detail what is meant by second part of the fourth uh, convolution layer in the next slide. But before that, let me just tell you what this, what this does. We're referring to the fourth layer, which is quite high in the hierarchy. That's why it refers to uh, content. Now, extraction of style from an image. So we'll just do the opposite. So again, an excerpt from the research paper. To obtain a representation of the style of an input image, we use correlations between different filter responses over the spatial extent of the feature maps. We obtain a stationary multi-scale representation of the input image, which captures its texture information but not the global arrangement. So th it gets a bit tricky here. So what we basically do is, we use the feature maps, uh, well, especially in the lower layers, but uh, I won't go there right now. We'll go there later on. So. We, use, we take feature maps and produce correlations, which basically means we uh, perform dot products between the same layers. So what does this capture? How does this capture the uh, spatial arrangement? And so how does this uh, ignores the global arrangement and captures the texture? So, uh, well, to understand this, you can think about it in this way. If an image has a lot of colors, textures, which basically means a lot of style that represents the texture and color represent the style of an image not the content content is in shapes like for example if uh, if there's a building in a picture the shapes represent the building but the color represent the style of that image so we want to capture the style so what we do is we perform uh, correlation we, we calculate correlation now the value is of the matrix is very high which means it has a lot of colors it has a lot of uh, textures but it does not capture the global arrangement so that's why to in order to capture the style of an Im input image, we, we use correlations between different filter responses. It ignores the actual arrangement of the objects in the image, but it actually captures only the texture and colors. So that's why in order to extract style, we use correlations. Now these correlations between feature maps has been given a special name known as gram matrix. So you'll come across this over and over when you implement the network. The layer used for calculating the gram matrix are the first part of the first layer, same goes for second, third, fourth and fifth layer with varied style constant for each layer. So if you want to uh, use more of the first layer, you have to multiply it with a constant that is higher in value compared to other layers. We will see these, these things more in more detail when we implement and in the next slide when we represent them as mathematical formulas. So, but the difference, I want you to know the difference between these. So in the previous slide, you have seen that we have only used one layer, which is the second part of the fourth layer, which is quite high in the, in the hierarchy. But for style, we are using lower layers as well. So style is captured from lower layers and the content is captured only from the high layer. Now, why is second part of the fourth layer? Why not fifth layer? Uh, well, it is, you can use that, you can experiment with that, but the, in standard implementation, second part of the fourth layer was used so that's why we are using that we're trying to reproduce the results that's it you can experiment with that and you you might get amazing results so just go ahead and experiment but for in this video we'll use that standard implementation now the constant that we multiply to each of these gram matrix can be seen as a hyperparameter used for changing style level so if you increase that the style from a particular layer is captured more and not from the other layer so that is what it's meant by that and we'll see that in the code also so here is the network and here you can understand what is meant by different parts. So whenever there is a constant depth and we perform convolution with constant depth, so the next convolution won't be given a name of conv2. Like for example, if the depth is 64 and we perform another convolution and the depth remains same, so it will become a part of the first convolution. That's why we'll refer to it as convolution 1, 2 here. Now if you change the depth, the convolution changes, it is a standard notation. It, it's not hard and fast tool, but it is a standard notation. So once you change the depth, you have come to the next level of convolution. So it is referred to as conv2. Now, the that this is the first part of conv2. Now, again, if you keep the depth same, that is 128, and perform another convolution, it becomes conv2, two, the second part of convolution 2. Now, if you change the depth, it becomes conv3. And if you keep the depth same and keep on performing a lot more convolutions, the depth remains same. So the conv layer will be same, but it's part it will increment it, its parts. So that is why we have multiple parts, con 3, 1, con 3, 2, con 3, 4. And, that, and this is what is was referred to by the paper in the previous slides. Uh, to extract the style, we use all of these layers highlighted by, underlined by uh, 
red ink and we use con 42 to extract the content of the image so that's it this is the vg19 layer so the key finding of this paper is that representation of content and style in convolution neural network are separable so this is was the key finding that that we can actually separate the content and the style in convolution neural networks so finally let's see the mathematical formula for content loss and style loss and we'll minimize those to produce a new image so a bit of math here but it, nothing nothing complex you have already understood everything so let p and x be the original image and the image that is generated and p and f be the respective feature representation in each layer i then we define the squared loss between the two feature representations at the content loss so it's very straightforward just the square loss right now content this is the content loss but the style loss gets a bit trickier so let a and x be the original image and the image that is generated and a i and g i be the respective style representations in layer i the contribution of each layer to the total loss is then this formula right a squared loss and uh, multiplied by some constant and now the style is weight times this particular error el and this g over here is the gram matrix that we have already seen so it's nothing but a convolution oh sorry it's nothing but correlation between the feature maps so this is called the gram matrix and the w here is the arbitrary constant that is the weight and you can set this weight to different values to get different levels of style and we'll implement everything in detail in the next video where we implement it in pytorch now we'll combine these loss functions now some constant times content loss plus some constant times style loss and so these constants are called alpha and beta so these are called content weight and style weight these again are parameters so if you these are hyperparameters now you can set these hyperparameters to get very varied styles of varied levels of style transfer if content weight is kept very high content will be given more preference so less style will be applied if style weight is more then more style will be applied and content is kept very low so this is what is meant by the hyperparameters that's it so what is up next we'll implement the research paper along with the input and output pipeline for artistic neural style transfer so we'll produce results such as this or this or this that's it so i guess you understood the basic gist of the research paper and you're looking forward to implementing this neural style transfer so this is a really amazing technique of style transfer i have played around with it a lot i think you'll enjoy it too in the next video we'll implement everything from scratch and it will be fun so so stay tuned for the next one if you have any doubt or you want me to cover any other topic just write that down in the comment section below and see you guys in the next one